Okay, so this video was created in the aim to give you, the property owner or person with far too much time on their hands, information on gutter guard and whether or not it is worth installing. This is easily one of the most frequently asked questions when it comes to roof maintenance. Is the product worth the cost? And when you head down that avenue, you need to consider a few things. First, will the guard still need to be cleaned regularly? Second, how hard is it to clean the guard without reducing its effectiveness? And third, will you be the one cleaning it? Now, if you're asking any of these questions, then you probably don't have much experience with gutter protecting systems, and finding relevant unbiased information can be very difficult, as can be quite common when companies are trying to market a product. But it's all good, that's why we make these videos. We'll look at a few different types of guards and the theory behind what they are trying to achieve. So to begin, let's have a look at one of our client's gutters. Now this gutter mesh was installed six months ago after property completion and recommendation was passed along that a large tree was out the front of the client's house and he really kind of needed some protection. Now this guard system is readily available at most hardware retails and generally looks something like this when it's packaged. It is essentially rolled up mesh which you bend to fit the profile of the gutter, thereby blocking leaf entry and build up. Now this particular mesh has been installed reasonably well, uh, but at the end of the day, it's still just a cheap, well-marketed product and despite all claims to the contrary, falls apart pretty quickly under direct sunlight. Now it can be installed to underlap the roof sheeting and press into the lip of the gutter, uh, but this is very time consuming and for a product that quickly becomes brittle and doesn't hold up under much weight, I wouldn't advise it. So let's have a little look at what's happened in the six months since installation. Now you can see there's a quite a large amount of leaf and semi-composted debris sitting underneath the mesh and in the gutter itself. Uh, this is a pretty significant amount, uh, more than enough to block the passage of water flow and put unnecessary weight upon the gutter itself. But rather than focus on the consequences related to choke gutters and downpipes, uh, let's ask the question, how did this much debris get underneath the guard in such a short time? Now, as I said before, this is a very basic system. So the vast majority of this buildup would be as a result of leaves falling on the roof, sliding down the sheeting and getting caught between the small edges where mesh meets gutter and mesh meets roof. Now, once a few leaves get caught in the mesh, they create a barrier of sorts for other leaves to build up against, and very quickly these buildups begin to break down to smaller organic matter. Now, the rate at which this happens varies heavily between different tree species. Having said that, even our lovely big gums here in Western Australia, which have extremely slow composting leaves, generally need no more than a year of steady heat and rain to get to the point where they can slip through the smallest of holes. Now, this is very important to remember. As leaves breaks down, the rain that washes into your gutters through the guard will start to take that leaf matter with it. Now fair enough, this system is anywhere from 20% to 3% of the cost of professionally installed gutter guard. So as such, it's less effective, often allowing whole leaves to slide between its curvature and the gutter walls. Now, this is another section of the house which would have escaped the bulk of summer winds, which would have then reduced the amount of debris you could expect to see in it. Even so, it's a relatively high buildup, certainly enough to restrict water flow. Now, the really worrying thing in this scenario is that someone that should have been in a position to know what they were talking about has recommended this ineffective product be installed in the first place. This then leads clients to a false sense of security regarding the need for gutter maintenance. And when issues like staining and water damage occur, often the first call out is to a plumber who may or may not have a substantial call out fee, which then instructs them that their gutters require cleaning. Bad luck for the consumer, right? Right, so this next shot is of professionally installed long life gutter guard. It's been fixed on every other ridge, snugs really tight in the troughs and has a fixed runner attached to the top of the gutter. Uh, now some will argue that sealant should have been applied to the edge running along the roof sheeting itself just to prevent the gutter guard from lifting and allowing leaf matter to get caught on those sharp edges. However, doing this makes removing the guard a very lengthy process and leaves the roof sheeting looking terrible afterwards. Now why would you ever need to remove it? Because the debris still builds up. This is unavoidable. The leaves can and will get stuck in this fine mesh. All it takes is a few twigs and leaves getting caught in the troughs where roof sheets meet the guard or a few hardened leaf stems to get snagged in the mesh itself 
and you have the same issue you would have had with the cheaper gutter guard build-ups. And it's not just leaves falling into your gutters either. It's pollen, flowers, seeds, dust if you have ceramic or concrete tiles, and dust and sand in the air from nearby construction. All of these factors can, in a matter of several months, change this into this, and then eventually into this. Now, what happens if you keep it clean? If you can keep the leaf matter from breaking down above your gutter guard, you will certainly reduce the chance of buildup beneath the guard. However, from experience, cleaning this gutter guard, usually by hand or with a stiff brush, without damaging it, is like pulling teeth. And without cleaning, this is what you can expect to see happening over a surprisingly short matter of time. Now, one of the biggest selling points of professional gutter guard is that it spares the rust buildup that occurs from constantly full gutters. And this is true. It does spare the gutters harm in the short term. Until it doesn't. Now, surely there must be some products that work, right? Well, yes and no. Uh, there are some products which can be used very efficiently. Gutter brush is one of these. Uh, this can likely be purchased from your local hardware store. It's flexible and extremely efficient in preventing blockages when bent into downpipe entrances or used in tight gutter spaces, such as between where the house roof will meet that of a patio. Now, it will take longer to clean your gutters with this installed as the strips have to be cleaned also, and it's messy, but the chances of water-related issues like leaks, damage, and whatnot are certainly reduced. Right, to answer those original questions, will the guard still need to be cleaned regularly? Absolutely. How hard will it be to clean the guard without reducing its effectiveness? Very, unless done very carefully and often. And will you be the one cleaning it? Now, this is the important one. If not, then get a couple of quotes from a reputable gutter cleaner. In my experience, it takes roughly the same time to clean gutter guard as it would have to clean the gutters if the guard had not been there. Now, it must be said, I'm only giving advice based on my experience as an own operator in the roof maintenance industry. I also know that a lot of people make their livelihood from selling and installing this product, and I've got no qualms with trying to get by. Just remember that the large majority of companies who sell and install these products are not the ones that are being called back for maintenance in three, five, or seven years time when the problems start to occur. So it's easy to understand that accurate long-term product knowledge may be lacking. Now, if you have any questions, feedback, or any criticism, please feel free to leave it in the comments and I'll get to it as I can. Otherwise, cheers guys. Thanks for joining me.